All right. Pat's Two Cents with God's Church of Love every Tuesday and Saturday. Reading Isaiah chapter 6. The glory of the Lord is something to experience, y'all. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With twain, he covered his face. With twain, he covered his feet. And with twain, he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the posts of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, with my for mine eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. And he said, Go and tell this people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not, and see ye indeed, but perceive not. Listen, that's, that's a call. First, you're called to holiness. You're called into the kingdom of God. Then you're called to service. Listen, you guys. One of the things that my heart longs for is for each and every one of us here at God's Church of Love and those of you on YouTube who watch these videos, that you would have that personal encounter with God that would steady your storm, calm your nerves, uh, clarify all the questions that you've never been able to get answered, all the quandaries in your life. There's something about experiencing God, and I'm not talking about one particular way. But once you've experienced God, you notice there's an atmosphere about him. When, he, when, he, when his presence becomes manifest, there's a sweet atmosphere. We refer to it as the anointing, just like the song we just played a minute ago, Holy is His Name. There's a sweet anointing. We have to seek God's face in such a way that all else dies in His presence. You notice Isaiah, the very first verse, said in the year that King, King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up. You know, the thing that gets me about that, there are times in our lives, I call them altar moments, where something very important to us or someone very important to us, not necessarily physically dies, but the relationship dies, the, the connection dies, the importance you placed on some things die. Once that starts to happen, as Jesus says, he that saves his life will lose his life. He that loses his life for my sake will save his life. When you are willing for everything that's important to you to die, for God's sake, you're at that threshold of experiencing him. See, one thing God will not do is compete 
for our attention. He's not going to do tug of war with those things in life that grab our attention and distract us so heavily. He's not going to he's not going to go toe to toe and and, and and try to overcome. No, we have to do that. We have to decide, okay, which is most important to me? This and all of that or him experiencing him. Well, once you start experiencing, you start getting a taste of him. You start experiencing his atmosphere and corporate anointings at church services, prayer meetings, gatherings. And you start to experience what his holy atmosphere feels like, what it sounds like, how it affects you. You start realizing there's a whole lot more to God than what I thought. And I want to know this God and the power of his resurrection. I want to know this God in the fellowship of his suffering. I want to know this God. I want to know the love he has for me. I want to know the peace he has for me. I want that joy unspeakable and full of glory. I want to know what it feels like to have him turn my mourning into dancing. Weeping may endure for a night, y'all, but joy comes in the morning. There's something that comes with the presence of God. In the presence of the Lord, there is joy. Ah, <sighs> My heart's desire, this is not a sermon, it's just a quick word of exhortation. My heart's desire is that you will get to know him. You will know him, lean on him, call on him, hunger and thirst for him, for his atmosphere, for his essence, for his aroma, for his presence, for his glory. That you would long for everything he's got, everything he is. Hmm. Because I'm telling you, once you start tasting and seeing that the Lord is good, once you start feeling his love for you, that supernatural, galactic, out of this world love, you will hunger for him more. And you will long for the things of this world and the, and the, 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 the temporary things of life will begin to lose their value in your heart. And things will begin to die. And the more things die, the more you will be able to experience God, his glory, his presence, his supernatural love. When you die to your human rights, when you die to that tongue, that bell clapper, as my mother used to call it, when you die to your pride, when you die to your little pet sins, your little pet hurts, your little pet resentments, when you die to certain people, mm, when their importance in your life dies in your heart, you'll be at a place, you'll be poised and in position to connect with God in a way you never thought you could connect with him before. See, a lot of people, we go through life thinking that uh, it's about going to church, hearing a sermon, singing a few hymns, opening the Bible, reading together, going home, and you're back to your daily routine. God can show up in your car. God can show up in the middle of you crying your eyes out in frustration. God can show up in the middle of your anger, baby, and put that fire out, just like that. God can show up in the most unexpected moments. See, God responds to hunger. Now, one thing that I noticed that we tend to lack more and more in this day and age, for some reason, 
you would think that the hunger for him would grow with all the craziness that's going on. But God responds to hunger. How do I know that? You look at the Bible. Let's just look at a few stories in the Bible. I'm just going to tell them for the sake of time. You look at, at, at Emmaus Road. The guys were walking right after the crucifixion of Jesus. And what happens? Jesus shows up as a stranger on the road with them. Why did Jesus show up? What pulled Jesus' attention to even want to be with those two guys? Right. It's hunger. And what did they tell him when he acted like he was going to keep on going when they got to their destination? They were like, oh, no, please don't. Don't go. Come and stay. Come a little longer. Come eat. Come drink. Whatever. Come and stay. And when he broke the bread and poured the wine, that's just another way of saying, he called their names and he opened their eyes supernaturally and they recognized this is the risen Savior, the resurrected Lord. He's alive. You know how many people he walked with down Emmaus Road that looked at him and only saw a stranger? They didn't see the risen Lord, the Jesus. They didn't see that. No. Why did these two guys see it? Hunger! Hunger! When Mary Magdalene went down after the Sabbath to go and anoint his body with oil and prepare him, right? What happened? The body wasn't there. And she didn't know what. She was beside herself. She was running around like a chicken with her head cut off, trying to find out where they put her Lord. And she found what she perceived as the gardener. And she's, please tell me, where have they laid my Lord? That's hunger. And Jesus turned around. And she's like, where, where did they put my Lord? All he said was Mary and supernaturally her eyes were open. Now, you want to hear something crazy? None of the other disciples got to see him right off the press. He was hot off the press, you guys. He had just come out of that tomb. She saw the resurrected Savior hot off the press. Nobody else saw that but her. When I talk about, I'm talking about the other disciples, whoever was with her saw it. But she was the main one that got to see it because she would not leave that tomb. She was dying to see her Savior, even if it was a dead body. That's a hunger. There's a hunger that, that ushers in God's presence, you guys. There's a hunger and a longing that your soul just longs for God. It's that hunger that connects you and opens up your eyes to things nobody else sees. That's the hunger. It's the hunger that makes you feel God saying, Ooh, do I have something great for you coming up. You feel it. You see the facial expression, but you don't see him. But you know the expression. You know the way he feels. You feel the exuberance. You know it's God. How do you know that? There has to be a connection. My heart's desire is that you hunger for God so, so much so that you see him, that you touch him, that you feel his touch, that you smell his aroma, that you hear his voice, that you connect with him one on one, that your connection with him it may only be once in a lifetime, but that one connection will last you a lifetime. All the others will be other experiences, 
But that one connection will be stronger than any connection you've had with anybody on this planet. It's something experiencing God. That's my prayer for you, that you hunger for God enough to make him want to honor your hunger with his presence. Amen. God bless you.